to welcome all of you great hosts. I would want to welcome you to this new topic that we'll be looking at the manufacturing accounts. Okay, it is a topic that you find in the paper two of your examinations. Okay, I've picked out this question from the Northwest Province, September 2020. Manufacturing, it was question number two. So I'll start from the beginning up to where it is actually going to end. And I'll be doing it in parts. Okay. So the first part, anyway, I'm not going to write anything. I'll just be explaining the theory part. Okay, fine. The first part, 2.1.1. Okay. It is saying the salary paid to the factory supervisor or manager will be classified as that is indirect labor cost. Why? Because the supervisor or the factory manager is not directly involved in the manufacturing of the products. Okay, 2.1.2, prime cost is calculated as follows. Calcul to calculate prime cost, we need direct labor cost and direct material cost. Then for our answer is C, direct labor cost plus direct material cost gives us the prime cost. 2.1.3, variable cost per unit is calculated as follows. Of course, we have to look at the total variable cost and then we divide by the number of units that are produced. Okay, so the answer there is D, 2.1.4. Which one of the following is regarded as a factory overhead? Factory overhead are those expenses that took place within the factory. We only have got the indirect material cost. Indirect material cost. Okay, that is all for the theory part. Let's move on to 2.2. True leather manufacturer. The information below was extracted from the financial records of true leather manufacturers which is owned by ryan o cohen the business manufactures one sale of leather handbag the financial year ends on 30 june 2020 requirement number one calculate the value of the direct labor cost that would appear in the production cost statement for the year ended 30 june 2020 okay fine let's move on to the information that is given on c information number c ryan employs the following individuals so this is the information that we are going to make use of to calculate our direct labor cost or the money that is given to the factory workers fine okay if you look at it closely we have got the number of employees are four and then the normal time for these four employees and they get 120,000 per employee and then there is also overtime Okay, fine. Let's do that calculation first and see how much we are going to get. Okay, so we are going to say the four employees, the four employees times 120,000 rent. Okay, and then we are also going to calculate the money for the overtime. There are also four employees times, okay, uh, the number of hours that they are working times 180 hours we are also going to multiply by the rate that they are getting which is uh given here at 87 rent 50 okay 87 rent 50 okay so four times 120,000 is going to give us 480,000 it's going to give us 480 480,000 Okay, 4 times 180 hours times 87 rent 50, it will also give us something like 63,000. 63,000 rent. Okay, 63,000 rent. Okay, so these are the normal hours, the money that they receive for the normal hours, and this is the overtime. Okay, what else do we need to look at? Okay, fine, when we add the two amounts, we are going to get something like Okay, let's add, we'll get something like 543,000 rent. Okay, this is the direct labor cost. And remember, let's go back to information C. Okay, the following deductions will be made from the employee's wages. Remember, we are not going to look at the deductions because we are interested in the gross salary or the gross wage. What we are only going to consider are the other contributions that are made by the employer. We have got the pension fund 12% of the wages of the normal time and then the unemployment insurance fund on a rent for rent basis. Okay, unemployment insurance fund is 1% of the total gross wage. 
Okay, fine. Let's first of all calculate the, pe the pension fund 12% of the normal wages. Okay, so the normal wages uh, that we are given here, they are 400. We are going to say 480,000. These are normal wages. Okay, normal wages 480,000 times the 12%. Okay, it is going to give us something like, okay, let me check on my calculator. It is going to be 50, 57,600 trend. Okay, so this is the pension fund contribution, the fund that is the money that is contributed by the employer. Let's also calculate the UIF. The UIF, it is saying that it is a rand for rand basis. So it means that if the employee is contributing 1%, also the employer is going to contribute the same amount. Okay, so if you look at the wages that we are given here we have got 543,000 543,000 so we are going to save the 543 543,000 okay 543,000 multiply by 1% okay it is going to give us something like 5,430 if i'm not mistaken let me check again with my calculator okay so this is the money that the employee contributes this is also the money that is contributed by the employer. But here we're only interested in the employer's contribution. Okay, so now what we do on top of this money that we have already calculated, the normal uh, wage and the overtime, we are also going to add the pension fund contribution and we are also going to include the UIF. Okay, so finally we are going to have something like, let me go back to my calculator. We we'll end up getting something like 606, 606 and 30, 606,030 rent. It is our direct, direct labor. This is our direct labor cost. Okay. So it is simply a matter of you honoring the information that is given here. How many employees? How much are they getting when it comes to the overtime? How many hours and what is the rate per hour? And then we look at the employer's contribution, not the deductions, the employer's contribution, the pension fund, the 12% and the UIF, which is also 1%. Thank you.